Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I will explain how to configure cores in ASP.NET Core Web API. I will show you how to enable cores in the most basic form and then I will introduce different configurations to allow different origins, methods and headers. Also, I will show you how to expose our custom headers and enable subdomains with cores. If you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports this channel as well. Now, let's continue with this topic. Before we understand how to enable cores, we must understand an important concept in the web application security model called the same origin policy. Two URIs are considered to have the same origin if they have the same URI scheme, HTTP or HTTPS, same hostname and same port number, the endpoint at which applications talk to each other. The same origin policy states that the web browser will only allow communication between two URIs if they belong to the same origin. So, the client app at one URI cannot communicate with the server app at a different URI, as they belong to a different origin. This policy exists to isolate potential malicious scripts from harming other documents on the web. But there are some cases where cross-domain scripting is desired. This is where course comes into play. Cross-origin resource sharing, or course, is a mechanism to bypass the same origin policy of a web browser. Specifically, a server app uses additional HTTP headers to tell a browser that it is fine to load documents from its origin in a few selected client apps, of different origin. This is how it works. All modern browsers set the origin header automatically, which indicates the domain of the site making the request. If the server allows cross-origin requests from the origin, it sets the access control allow origin header with its value matching the origin header's value from the request. In another way, if the server doesn't include this header, the request fails. The browser shall receive the response data, but this data shall not be accessible to the client. Now, let's see this in the code. I have prepared two applications, a web API server app and a Blazor WebAssembly client app. The client app will run on HTTPS localhost 5011 and it simply communicates with my API that runs on 5001 and fetches the data for this specific page. So, nothing too complicated here, but it will serve the purpose of this video. Now, as I said, my API runs on localhost 5001 and here I have a single GET endpoint. Ok, now let's run both apps. And I will open the inspect window here and navigate to the fetch data page. As soon as I do that, you can see the request is blocked by course policy and our client app is not allowed to fetch the data from the required resource. Now that we have seen the same origin policy in action, Let's see how we can enable cores in ASP.NET Core. But just before I do that, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book and the Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client C Sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, we are working on new ones, so always check the links in the description below. So, let's continue and open the program file in the server app and modify it. Here, I will first create a constant string, policy name, and set the value to course policy. This is just for the reusability purpose here. Then I will use the builder.services and call the add course method that adds cross origin resource sharing services to the service collection. This method accepts an action delegate as a parameter where we can configure the course options. For the course options, I will call the add policy method, which adds a new policy to the configuration. It accepts the name of the policy and also accepts an action delegate as a parameter where I can set up the methods to build our policy. With this policy, I will enable access from any origin with the allow any origin method. Then I will allow any header in a request with the allow any header method. And finally, let's allow any method with the allow any method method. 
We can agree that this policy is not the strict one, but it is a basic setup that will remove the course issue for our client application. Also, what I need to do is call the use course method down here and pass the policy name to add the course middleware to the application's pipeline. Pay attention that you have to call this method after the use routing method if you have it in your app and before the use authorization method. Now, with this done, I can test this again. Let's open the inspect window with the network tab and navigate to the fetch data page. Now, you can see the data on the page. But if we inspect the request, you can see that we have the access control allow origin header inside the response. This is what you saw in my previous diagram at the beginning of this video. Also, in the case where we don't want to use multiple name policies, but a single default policy, we can do that as well. I need to replace the add policy method with the add default policy method and remove the name parameter. Also, I have to remove the policy name from the use course method. This will work the same as the previous configuration, just this time we are using the default policy because we don't have any other one. Ok, to continue, let's see how we can enable course with attributes as well. Instead of enabling course at the entire application level, we can also enable course at the controller level or the action level. To be able to do that, we have to use enable course attribute. Well, we can use the enable course attribute on top of the controller or the action and it will implement a default course policy. Or we can use the enable course with the policy name attribute to apply a named course policy. By using the name policy with the enable course attribute, we can apply different policies to different controllers or actions. Let's see that with an example. I will revert the first policy method to a previous one and the name parameter as well. And then let's call the add policy method one more time, pass the another policy name as the name argument, and for the action delegate, I will use the same configuration. The use course method stays the same because we are using multiple policies now. Finally, to see the enable course attribute in action, we are going to modify the weather forecast controller. Here, for this get action, I will use the enable course attribute and provide the name of the policy. Also, I will add one more endpoint here. And for this one, I will again use the enable course attribute, but this time with a different policy name. So, this is the way to configure multiple named course policies and apply them across different endpoints in your app. But now, Let's see how we can configure different policy options and make different name policies really useful. Right now, for both policies, we are allowing any origin, any header, and any method. But let's say we want to allow only our client application to access the first get action from the weather forecast controller and some other client on port 5021, for example, to access the second action. This time, I want to replace the allow any origin method with the with origins method, which accepts a param string origins as a parameter. This means that if we want to allow access to multiple origins for a single policy, we can just add multiple comma separated URIs as an argument. In this case, I will use only the URI from my existing client app. Also, let's modify the second policy using the with origins method and add a new URI with the 5021 port. In addition to this, when we want to allow access for client that has a main domain and multiple subdomains, we don't have to add all the URIs with subdomains as arguments. What we can do is use the wildcard in the with origins method, followed by the set is origin allowed to allow wildcard subdomains method. With this method, we allow origins to match a configured wildcard domain when evaluating if the origin is allowed. For now, let's just hide this configuration as we don't have any subdomains. 
If we take a look at our controller, we can see that we have only get actions inside. Well, we can specify that as well in the course configuration. Now, instead of allow any method, I will use with methods, which accepts param string methods as a parameter. Of course, this means if we want to allow access to multiple methods, we need to add them as multiple comma separated strings. In this case, I will only add the get method. Well, let's do the same for the second policy. Also, we can specify headers as well. For that, I can use the with headers method and add different headers here. In this case, I will add the content type header and the accept header. Additionally, when we want to expose some headers, we can use the with exposed headers method. For example, in our Blaze WebAssembly course, we create a pagination functionality on the web API side and add the required information inside the X pagination header. Something similar to this here, just with actual serialized metadata. But for our client application to be able to access that information inside the header, we have to expose it in the course configuration. For that, I will use the with exposed headers method with the name of the custom header. Now, with all these policies and configurations prepared, let's see how we can use course with minimal APIs. So, in the program class, let me add a very simple minimal API endpoint. And to enable course for this one, all I have to do is call the required course method and provide the policy name I want to apply. Nothing more than that. So, after all, think of course as an attempt at a more restrictive same origin policy. On one side, there is a growing need for security on the web. And on the other, there is a need to integrate web services. Course provides rich tools for an open and secure web. And ASP.NET Core allows us to take advantage of cross-origin resource sharing in our cross-platform web applications. As usual, Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.